Good morning. Uh, welcome to Terra at Home. We are here with Jillian Love this morning from the LCBO, and we are talking all summer. And I think one of my favorite things to make now that I discovered and figured out how to do it is sangria. In yes. the summer, it is the epitome of summer drinks. For yes, me. it's lovely. It's it lovely, is. and it can be done so many different ways. I mean, when you think back to the traditional way of making sangria, um, it originated from Spain. It was actually got a little tidbit of information. In 1964, they served it at the uh, the New York City Fair, and really? it was uh, the Spanish department that served it for the first time and it just took off oh, it and would. really it was a Rioja Spanish wine red mm -hmm. wine fermented in fruit juice mm -hmm. and brandy lovely mm. lovely mm. now there's so it's just taken on many, a whole life of its own right so many different ways to make sangria and it's mm -hmm. you know if you if you don't like red sangria you could do white sangria we've yep. got a couple of samples we'll do today and that's what I think I love you know again because you can make the white and um, you know we were talking before but I've you know, I started making, I would make a, like a pitcher of red and a pitcher of white and I'd have mm -hmm. it and everybody always just got going over to the white one, even guys like the white yeah. one because when you start putting in peaches and raspberries and, and that's what, it, as you say, whatever fruit you have, yes. you can really kind of experiment. Yeah, the only thing that really that you should be doing is um, making sure that you're doing citrus fruit in with other fruits. Right. Just because the citrus gives it the acidity. Right. And, and you that's want key, keep right? it fresh and crisp. Okay. Okay. Right. Because that, I think that's the one thing that, you know, if, if people are kind of just only throwing in berries, then you're kind of missing Right. that element right. so that is key so no matter what fruit you put in you should put in some citrus right so you can do um, you know chop up fruit any way you like you mm -hmm. can use any kind of fruit um, if you're doing it the day before which you should be doing it about 24 hours before uh, ferment your wine or put your wine in the pitcher put your fruit in let your fruit go through that natural osmosis into the in bleeding it into the uh, the drink okay um, if you are doing it 24 hours before take the pips off of the fruit because it'll okay. give a bitterness to it okay um, but if you're making it the day of, it's perfectly fine to leave all the uh, the skins okay, on. Okay, because you yeah, remember you mentioned that before. You know, a lot of times when you get sangria in a restaurant, you you have that on there. But that's again because they literally probably just made it. Yes, and it, okay. a lot of it is a nice presentation too. Like if you're making it, does it the look day a of, it looks very very. Because beautiful. when you've got the wine in there and you see kind of the the, the oranges get up against the side of the glass, yes. it looks really pretty. It looks the fruit beautiful. Looks nice. and presentation is everything. Really, yeah. I mean, if you're it having is. guests over, it's nice to have everything looking nice. Mm -hmm. um, the first one I'm going to make is mm -hmm. a white sangria okay. and this uh, is done with an elderflower liqueur called St. Germain. I'm and in it's love a with that. <laughs> very interesting liqueur. Oh. Very unique. It's about $50 to buy but mm -hmm. it goes a long way. Um, so only serve it to your <laughs> best friends. <laughs> Very close. And then close lock it away in the cupboard. <laughs> That's right. But it, it's actually organic, Leslie, and it's oh, um, right half the that. calories of a regular liqueur. So, mm -hmm. for one thing, um, it's made with uh, elderflower blossoms. Um, mm. And it's absolutely That's why it's lovely. So fragrant. Very fragrant, very um, sweet, very nice. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to mm -hmm. do a half a cup, or to a quarter cup to a half a cup. Okay. And add that over top of my fruit. And then, mm -hmm. normally, you would let this sit for maybe an hour in the, really? in the fridge just like that, that just so that the, okay. the liqueur can you can add a little more if you like it's sure. to, to whatever you want to do what i've done is uh, this is the new skinny grape uh pinot grigio mm -hmm. it's 80 calories a glass we're going to put in uh, maybe 400 calories into here <laughs> <laughs> we're going to add the whole bottle but when you say it like by glass it sounds so innocent i know so very low calorie it's all about having nice low calorie refreshing drinks so we're going to add the whole entire bottle into here like that. Mm, it smells like summer already. Now, can you smell it? It's mm -hmm, just lovely. I can. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to top with some sparkling wine or ginger ale. It depends right. on what you want to do. But if you want a nice low calorie um, sangria, then the sparkling say, wine the is The ginger ale is going to add sweetness to it sweetness. as well, right? A fair amount of sugar. And if sugar. you want it a little bit sweeter, just add the ginger ale. But if not, mm -hmm. you can use club soda or mineral water. Okay. So we're going to top with that. Just about maybe half the bottle or okay. three quarters of the bottle. Okay. So now what we're going to do is you're going to give it a little stir mm -hmm. and let all those nice fruits come through. Mm. And then you're going to put it in your fridge and just leave it there and let it chill really nicely. And then you're ready to serve Done. on the patio with some nice appetizers. And it's nice and fresh for the summer. Mm -hmm. That's great. Very mm -hmm. easy. Perfect. I so like that you put the, the star fruit in there because actually the shape of it looks really I cute know, in there. It really I haven't does, thought to yeah. do that one, but there you go. <laughs> so I was going to let you make the rosé sangria. Okay. Last so I see that you've opened that already. I did. I did. And Shall I go uh, ahead? You can. So okay. we're going well, to add. Um, oh, yes. I have to add. What am I adding first? So what we're going to do with the rosé sangria is we're yeah. going to add some triple sec. 
So oh. triple sec is an orange flavored mm -hmm. liqueur. Um, just a nice sweet orange flavored li okay. liqueur. So I'm gonna add that in. Okay. And let same thing. Just so let when it I'm adding Grand Marnier to mine, the similar you can, uh, effect, right? Yes. Okay. Grand Marnier is a brandy, which would be beautiful. Yes. Because I have done that, and I'm like, wow. Well, oh really yeah. Good. Grand Marnier would be very. <laughs> but then good. people have one glass, and they're like, whoa, you need some like <laughs> chips out here or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, always have food. Very right, important. Right. Very important message. Never serve alcohol in an empty stomach. <laughs> no. Uh, so then we're gonna add our whole bottle <laughs> okay. of sparkling rosé. So I haven't tried this idea. Well, I guess I should slow down a little bit or I'm going to have this all over the place. There's lots of sparkling rosés that you can get for sangria. You can actually do a sparkling Shiraz uh, from Australia that's lovely. Mm, um, a nice pink rosé. But the nice idea with the sparkling wine is it gives with the fruit. It's just such a nice fresh. It's great for desserts too mm -hmm. um, or Sunday brunch. Yeah. Um, much better than a punch. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and Hands the down. whole key to sangria <laughs> is making sure that that fruit has time to really go through. Because mm -hmm. if you just pour it like that, you can't really serve it right away. It needs some time in the fridge mm -hmm. and it needs time for the, for the flavors to really to like come intensify, through. right? Yes. Okay. okay. So you can, like, again, you can use any kind of fruit flavor, any kind of alcohol. If you're ever not sure, like, there's no um, real recipe for mm -hmm. sangria. It's whatever you like. Mm -hmm. If you like Grand Marnier, use Grand Marnier. If you like Triple Sec, mm -hmm. you can use, um, you know, a a little bit of flavored vodka if you want it. Well, that's the thing. I, I mean, there are so many different flavored vodkas now. I can't even believe there's vanilla and there's, there's like red licorice vodka and like cotton candy there's and marshmallow <laughs> vodka, s'mores <laughs> vodka. It's like madness. So it's you could make some serious <laughs> weird drinks, but <laughs> yeah, we have lots and lots of exciting. I'm always stuff. amazed when I'm with you. I'm like, what? <laughs> Bubble gum vodka? Now, yeah. if you don't want to take the effort, lastly, to make these uh, up. You can also just pick up at the LCBO. We have pre-made sangria over there. <laughs> do you, now, do you add that to just you to fruit? Can just you can add it to fruit, chop up some fruit, add Get it into a, a pitcher. Or if you just want to pour yourself a little glass, have a glass with ice and a little bit of fruit, and then you can put the t cap back on and put it in your fridge. And so how have long would that last in the fridge? Probably three to four days. Oh, um, that's cool. You know, that's actually a great idea, though, yeah, for somebody like, who's not going to make a giant pitcher for themselves. Yeah, so. like any wine base, it's going to the, the flavor profiles yeah. and the aromas are going to go off you know I fairly soon so I wouldn't leave it in your fridge yeah. for six months sure. or anything like that okay yeah so just before while. we wrap up obviously we always talk about social responsibility with the LCBO yep. so again you are making these you could make one of these a you could do for one someone that's alcohol free absolutely you just remove the alcohol yep. and use ginger ale use uh, fruit juices mm -hmm. use whatever you like and so same thing and then they're the feeling like part of the party and they're yeah. not feeling it's very important if, if you have drivers and to exercise social responsibility mm -hmm. it's very very important yeah you you are responsible for those people if they're at your house right. so so make sure you have food yes not a lot of salty foods because salty foods encourage um, drinking drinking so That's a good point you should serve you know more sandwiches more you know little breads appetizers breads food. things like the cheeses things yeah. like that that aren't you stay away from the chips and the salt okay yes. Jillian thank you good information loving this loving summer we'll be back with more chair at home where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots.
Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're here with Angelo at Adventure Attic in downtown Dundas. And thanks for letting us come into your space. I often see you out in the middle of nowhere, right? But we're actually exactly. here in the store. And uh, we want to talk, let's, heart of summer right now, let's talk about um, getting a family geared up to go camping because some people just don't even know where to begin, right? right. If you're just starting out and you have some young kids and you're like, let's do this, I want to expose them to the elements, how exposed do people want to be? <laughs> well, they're afraid of the weather. They're afraid of getting wet. Yes. And whether or not the weather cooperates, if you have good gear and good equipment, the wetness doesn't matter. The yeah, rain doesn't okay. matter because you're going to be protected and you're going to be able to maintain the fun level that you right. plan to have. Exactly. So where should we start? Should we start with the tent behind us? Because yeah. I guess you kind of need, number one, we need a tent. You need tent, a good tent. Tent is your shelter. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to keep you dry and and safe mm -hmm. when it's raining hard or if there's thunder and lightning. Right. Um, all our tents have lifetime guarantees. Okay. You want to buy a tent that has a good coating on the floor as well. Coatings are generally made of uh, polyurethane, uh -huh. the thicker the coating. And you can feel the coating on, on a good tent as opposed to a, a poor quality tent. So it's going to keep moisture out. It's going to keep moisture completely out. Mm -hmm. Now, when you see those coatings or those floors on tents that have plastic bottoms, those are definitely going to leak. Just because it's plastic <laughs> doesn't mean that it's waterproof because any water that's going to get in is going to come in through the, the ceiling, uh, and that's the plastic is going to hold the water in. So that's the worst oh, thing you, you could do is buy a tent like that. The other thing is the structure of the tent. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you have an aluminum pole tent. Mm -hmm. Fiberglass tends to break and is a lot heavier than aluminum. Okay. Most of our tents are uh, aluminum pole tents. Okay, and that's the great thing I think about camping nowadays is the equipment and the technology has improved over the years. That's right. And it just keeps getting lighter and lighter and in, more efficient. In this business, uh, the, the more you pay, the less you get. And the less is in the weight. And less is in the weight. Yeah. Um, once you stop uh, family camping or maybe camping furniture parks, you're mm -hmm. going to start maybe going out into Algonquin and portaging and, and right. carrying your equipment from lake to lake. And now you really want to make sure you get something that's lightweight. Sure, you do. Okay, you don't want to be exhausted before you even sure. get to your, your point, <laughs> your destination. Okay, so you've got yourself a tent, and you have amazing family sized tents as well that's that, right. uh, that again have that sort of a. Called the vestibule. Yeah, the vestibule that comes out, again, that's protecting. That's that area where you can put shoes and excess bags and things like that outside of the tent. Right, while your sleeping area is going to be clean, you're mm -hmm. not going to lose anything inside the tent. Mm -hmm. and it's all for sleeping. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, so we've got ourselves a tent. Now we need to sleep. People want to get a good night's sleep, right? You get pretty, you're sure. pretty exhausted by a, a day out and being adventurous. Right. So uh, maybe we should talk uh, sleeping bags. Sleeping bags, uh, very important. Uh, the main thing about sleeping bag is the fill. You can get a couple different types of fill. The mm -hmm. two main ones are uh, down and synthetic. Mm -hmm. For family camping, you probably don't want down. They're a lot more expensive. And if down gets wet, it won't keep you warm, and if down gets wet, it will not dry. It takes a long time to dry. Oh, okay. However, it's That's lightweight and very compact. You're right. A synthetic uh, sleeping bag, if it gets wet, it'll still keep you warm, mm -hmm. and it dries quickly. Okay. Chances are you're with a family, things get left outside, mm -hmm. things are going to get wet <laughs> if it gets rained. <laughs> things so happen, right? <laughs> synthetic bags are best for families mm -hmm. or young people buying tents, mm -hmm. uh, buying sleeping bags. Now, um, underneath that, of course, I, I, I always think, you know, you're out, you're on the earth, so the earth is uneven. Right. So you can have a really bit of a bumpy surface. Obviously, you're trying to find the optimal place to place your tent, sure. but regardless. It's hard to find a nice flat area on a campsite. Right, right. So, so having a good one of these little Green guys down here gives but you some support, right? And just as important as the support or keeping your back nice and flat mm -hmm. is its insulating ability. Insulating. The ground is cold and it's going to absorb your, your body heat through the sleeping bag. And your sleeping bag won't insulate that much mm. because you're compressing all that insulation in your oh, sleeping that's bag. A, so that's a, really a good sleeping point. pad will absorb your body heat and hold on to uh, your body heat. Okay. Now that sleeping pad isn't an air pad, it's got foam in it. So the foam right. is going to hold on to your uh, body heat yeah. as opposed to uh, uh, an all air mattress that's just going to again take your body heat and ah, transfer so it. So make sure there's some type of insulating layer inside your pad. Okay, good, I like that. And uh, again, pillows Com and... Compressible pillow. Yeah? You know, let's face it, yeah. we've got our minivans, maybe even our trailers. We'll bring our pillows from home. Mm. But again, if and you are carrying in. your Love equipment, that. yeah, it just unfolds. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> it's a very Oop. dense pillow. It's mm -hmm. one of the best pillows uh, made mm -hmm. because it's it's not going to compress. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to hold that shape That's when cool. your head's resting on it. Great. Now, I think, um, obviously, we, you, uh, we should probably mention this before we get to the kayaks because we want to talk kayaking. Keeping our, food, fun. keeping our food cool, you know. And uh, safe, right? This is a soft-sided cooler. Mm -hmm. um, it has all sorts of different compartments. But most importantly, inside of it is a removable liner that when your ice melts, 
uh, you can That's remove your smart. water and get rid of it and That's keep great. things dry inside. So Fantastic. this is an e and, and clean, you're right? Yeah, exactly. It's easy to clean, things are going to spill. I love it. So people start getting a little more adventurous and, uh, you know, again, we were just talking about, uh, you know, the, the fact that we are surrounded by local waterways that we can access. We like don't a realize plethora how of them around yeah. us here in the Golden Horseshoe. So um, kayaking and canoeing is awesome. We should, I, I, I've I mentioned to you before that I love kayaking. I think it's awesome and it's easy to do and you don't need to be scared, but there are different types. So let's talk sure. about these kayaks behind. Us. Um, we have the yak board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a sit-on-top kayak. It's it's they're great for cottages. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got pristine water, great temperatures, but they're yeah. only good between the months of June, July, and August because you're going to be sitting in in water. You're getting you're, wet. You're going to be wet, and yeah. that's great if you're at a cottage. And the, it, again, the water's a lot cleaner up north. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to use one in the Hamilton Bay. You're, you're sitting <laughs> in that water. You know, it, no, it's you all don't. right. Um, and then the next one is the mm -hmm. Heron. That's mm -hmm. a stable kayak. So that would be an entry level kayak. It has a giant cockpit in it. Right. And it's you wider. will you cannot tip that thing unless you really try. You'd have to lean right out of it. Okay. So for a beginner kayak, it's a nine foot kayak, so it's built for comfort, not for speed. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be paddling very no, but fast. Just to go that. out and do a cruise. But and I think that's you know, I think a lot of people are afraid of kayaking because we see, you know, on you know, on TV the adventure guys and they're flipping and rolling and that's right. And that's people are like, water. I don't want a kayak like that, but no. no. So that's that's Not what that, that uh, heron one's good. Okay. And, and, like as well as relaxing, you're gonna get a workout. Yeah, exactly. That's which is the other thing. Awesome. Again, we're all being about tired at the end of the day. And then finally the blue the one. The top one, the Manitou. Mm -hmm. Now that one is a completely touring kayak. You're gonna be able to uh, put gear in that kayak for several days, maybe up to a week. It comes with uh, a rudder, which mm -hmm. is operational from inside the cockpit. Mm -hmm. um, storage compartments in the bow and stern, and a little compartment at the very top of it where you can put a camera or something that you want to get at quickly. That's amazing. So that yeah. one is more technical kayak. It's going to be feel a little bit more tippy, but what it's going to do is go through waves and more severe weather a okay. lot better than Okay, so you just have to really, you know, to come in and talk to you guys and, and really get, you sure. have to know what you're doing and what you want out of your camping trip or your yeah. adventures, right? That's right. Yeah. And, and uh, we, we've done it all. Yeah. All our, our, our staff, myself, have been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what you want. You, there's no way that you could ever speak to this if you haven't no. actually lived it because you have to be through, again, the conditions as you mentioned. You, those conditions really do play a huge role sure. on uh, you know, your decisions no. and when the equipment that you have to bring. So mm -hmm. there's so many other items that we could talk about today, but can you believe it? We're already out of time. That was fun. <laughs> I know. How much awesome, how awesome was that? So midsummer, you still have lots of time to get out there and uh, have some great advice with your family and again it's a great thing to introduce your family to at a really young age and uh, start sure. small and, and go big right? Keep going. All right thanks Angela that's awesome Thank okay you. that's it for uh, Tara at home we'll have more after this where color lives. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're in our Terra kitchen with Chef Rachel. And what are we making today, Rachel? Today we're going to do a pasta. Okay. So I call it a spicy shrimp garlic oh. pasta. Okay. And fairly straightforward ingredients, right? It's really simple. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Though. That's what people want. Uh, you know, this time of year, just come home, make something quick mm -hmm. and easy, and eat it outside your back porch, right? Yes, exactly. So okay. So this is simple, but all the ingredients are. Um, are really good together and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very rich in the way that I put a lot of butter and ah. a lot of garlic. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we're just focusing on those couple ingredients. All right. So we start. Let's start. We'll do the pasta. Okay. So pasta in the boiling Get water that here. Rolling. Okay. In a moment, we'll just give that a mm -hmm. swirl around and make sure it's not sticking together. But the best way to cook your pasta is to follow the instructions on the box, of mm -hmm. course. So if you're using dried, 
uh, about 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that'll be perfect timing for us uh, to cook this up. And the shrimp, as we've talked about in the past, super fast to cook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So again, this is a really easy dinner that you can put together while your pasta is cooking. So okay. you don't really, really need to spend too much time worrying about having everything ready at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Because it'll work out perfectly. <clears throat> So we want this to be nice and hot, and I'm actually going to use a, a combination of oil and butter ah, for my okay. shrimp. Now, why do you do that? Do you just are you, does it so that you don't have to use as much butter, or does sure. it, is it just like the that does flavor profile? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, mainly for the flavor. Yeah, is is why I like to use a little bit of butter. It just okay. adds that richness in. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and also, when you're adding butter, you're not going to get that. If you're just using oil, you're going to get that real sear. I don't necessarily need that here, so put the butter in. Okay. Um, because with the butter, you're not going to get that that Ooh. high heat sear okay. with the color. Right. Okay. But okay. we don't need that, so we'll put a little bit of butter in for the flavor, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and again the oil, so we don't have to use as much butter, which is definitely makes sense. Okay. Uh, so put that in. We'll get it melted, and then we can start cooking the shrimp. It's nice Enjoy. and hot. That is a lot of butter. <laughs> mm. butter That's tastes okay. So good. We have lots of shrimp, so. It's okay. It's so true. now I add in the garlic. Now this is about four big cloves of garlic. You love but garlic, I but I'm okay it. with you on that. I love I'm, it. I'm all about that too. So we'll put that in. We can turn this down a bit because we don't want the butter to get too, too browned. But giving the butter a little bit of color also adds flavor too. Okay. Gives it a little nutty flavor. Mm. Oh, that smells good. It does. We both like, oh, that mm. smells so good. It, it really does smell good. It's it's a nice aroma for your home. So it's getting a little dark. So I'm going to turn that down a bit and take it off the heat for a moment. Okay. Um, but at this time, I'm going to add in the red pepper flakes. Okay. So it'll be a little spicy. You can add as many as you want, and mm -hmm. then we can just get those kind of toasting with everything else. Mm -hmm. And we can also add in uh, some salt and pepper. Okay. Mm. And then we're just we're just putting the shrimp in. We're going to cook the shrimp in the sauce. Okay, let's give the pasta a stir here. Okay. Now, good thing again, um, obviously we're going to be using uncooked shrimp here, but you could use cooked shrimp, you just would put them in kind of last minute, right? Exactly. If cooked, you just mm -hmm. don't want it, because they, li they like cook in like a couple of minutes, don't they? Yes. Yeah. And I do do that sometimes. Yeah. I use the already cooked, and yep. you basically you're just heating it up yeah. and, and Well, it's just good if you have the them in your freezer as a staple, right? It's something that you can trying to figure out what to make one tonight, so it's just mm -hmm. going to be easy to have them that way. So I'm going to add a little bit more oil, and this is only because <clears throat> this is actually going to be the sauce for our pasta, so right. it's the butter and the oil that's making that sauce. We're sure not adding anything else. Mm -hmm. So we can add the shrimp in now, and uh, just cook those for a couple minutes, turn it, make sure they're all coated, and mm -hmm. again, if you have to add a little bit more oil and you want a little bit more um, sauce, basically, mm -hmm. for your pasta, you can do that. Okay. At the end as well, but this is nice. It's it's uh, well, it's it's butter and oil, so it's not necessarily you know the most healthy, but it's nice and light, right? You yeah. don't have a heavy cream sauce right. or anything. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, so put this back up to a medium high. We can season again too. I like my okay. salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna throw in some fresh herbs too. So I have thyme okay. here, fresh mm -hmm. thyme. Um, Let's give it a little more flavor, right? Yeah, and some color too. Some I color. like the green. Sometimes I add in uh, parsley as well if you have some of that. Mm -hmm. That's a very mm -hmm. versatile herb. So yep. if you're gonna keep any herbs in your kitchen, that would be one that but I would it's recommend. It's pretty neutral too, right? Mm -hmm. So you can add it if you're just looking to add color. Yes. Right? It doesn't really have too much of a flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Thyme has a really nice flavor though. Yeah. So I'll add in a little bit of chopped thyme. We can mm -hmm. add that in kind of closer to the end. Mm -hmm. And some lemon zest too. Right. Which is so perfect when mm -hmm. you're when you're thinking about shrimp. Seafood into the seafood, adding some lemon, and again, that's going to add some freshness. Yes, to it too. Nice yeah, fresh flavor. Cooking. Yeah, they don't take mm. long at all, so just uh, yummy. You just want to make sure that they're fully pink. Mm -hmm. They're not uh, that gray color anymore. So flip them around. We can add the lemon zest in at this time too. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, yeah, so it's a really kind of simple, easy pasta, but has a lot of nice flavors to it. Yeah, right away, you can <clears throat> smell the, the oils from the lemon, it smells so good. Yeah, and that little bit of heat too. Sometimes I like to add in some paprika, whatever okay. you have. Yeah. Okay. And for, again, I think spice. that's what, you know, when, when you're making a pasta like this, kind of just experiment to what kind of flavors that you really like, 
add that to it, right? I mean, it's, it's your own past, so you're just giving a good, you know, a base idea. This is great as, as it is, of course. Yes. But, you know, you, for your own preferences, what you really love. Like, when I add cilantro to everything, I mean, I wouldn't yeah. put cilantro on that, but <laughs> I pretty much add it to everything. Yeah. <laughs> so. And vegetables, too, if you wanted yeah, to add exactly. in some extra in. vegetables that you had left over in the fridge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would be good, too. Yep. Check on this pasta again. Yeah, it's important that you stir the pasta or else it's all going to stick together. And of course, you could also put in um, cherry tomatoes in there, right, which would be really good, mm -hmm. again, if you're looking for color. Some I still, fresh basil. The pasta that you made before with pancetta and tomatoes and basil, mm -hmm. and I love that. And I do that all the time, but I, again, I just play around with whatever I have. So again, that's what's good about pasta, yeah. so I love that. Okay. Okay, great. At this time, since uh, now, do you? It's all cooked. We're, we're going to take a quick break here in a moment. But do you add a little bit of pasta water to your sauce ever? Do you do that? I do. Depending on the sauce, though. Depending on so the sauce. So you're not doing that today, though. You don't really need to today, okay, just because it to. is the the oil and the butter. But okay. sometimes, if it's a tomato sauce, I like to add in a little bit just to get the right consistency. Okay. All right. Yeah. Secrets. Okay. We'll be back in just a few, and uh, we'll, we'll wrap it all up. where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and uh, kitchen smells very good right now mm -hmm. here, back with Chef Rachel. So we were making um, spicy shrimp pasta, Yes. and uh, we'll just kind of recap on the, in uh, the basic ingredients, they're really straightforward. Yeah, very straightforward. We started with some butter and oil, added in a couple big cloves of chopped garlic, some red pepper flakes, and then uh, just cook the shrimp in that. They only take mm -hmm. a couple minutes. We can add in some um, lemon zest, and I'm going to put some fresh thyme in shortly, too, for okay. a little bit of color and extra flavor. So, no, you don't actually cook the thyme, though. You're just kind of putting it near the end, I right? I like to do it right near the end. Okay. You don't want if to, you're, if you're using the fresh, you don't want to cook everything yeah. out of it. Okay. So I usually okay. add that in at the end. It's okay right. if it kind of warms up with everything else. Sure, okay. Um, whereas if I'm using dried, I usually kind of put that in at the beginning. At the beginning, okay. I've noticed that, and I was always mean to ask, mm -hmm. so, okay. So I'm just going to put the pasta right in here, and like you said, you know, it's okay if some of the water goes in there, and sometimes... Yeah, because that's what I'm finding, like a lot of um, chefs generally add the pasta to the sauce, where a lot of us at homes were just adding the sauce, sauce to the pasta, on top of the you're pasta. draining the pasta, then adding it separately, so how come you do that? I just do this because it's easier to mix it all together. If you mm -hmm. obviously, if you put the pasta in the bowl and then top it with the sauce, yeah. it's not all mixed up. No, and then so you're this in way, your bowl making a big mess trying to stir it all up. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. This way, all of the pasta gets tossed in the garlic and the mm -hmm. and all the flavors. Okay. Right. So yeah, we can top really it off good. now with the. Um, the time. With okay, the just a reminder, time. of course, uh, all of Chef Rachel's recipes can be found on our website, taragreenhouses.com, and uh, lots of good uh, recipes in there. And again, this is just a great dish. You can make it your own, do what uh, you like to do with it, but there we yeah, go. Yeah, that's so great. nice and fresh for the summertime, and I always like to top it off with lemon zest. A little bit more. I love lemon zest, so mm -hmm. the more the better me for too. me. And really, really nice good. And again, pasta of your choice, pasta. too. You can use whatever. Obviously, certain, certain pastas hold sauces better than others, mm -hmm. right? So, obviously, a spaghetti is just, but again, use a whole grain, whatever your choice, and, uh, and, and make it a, a healthy version of pasta. And you just want to eat the whole thing all by yourself, but you can't. You have to share. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. There That's a really great recipe. That Thank looks you. really, really good. Love it. Very there yummy. You can smell the lemon and garlic. So, so good. And the butter's hiding in there. You would never know. That's it for now. Have yourself <laughs> a great weekend.